Today we're going to go over the build for an RC airplane uh, I built. It's a PT-17 Stearman. It's a design, foam board design by Ben Harbor. And I'm going to talk about some of the things I built for it to both aid in functionality and essentially aesthetics using the Nage Max uh, 4 with the E80 laser module. Now, it is a foam board build, but there are some components, whether it be because of motor heat or pure strength, and uh, just to make, make it a little bit different that I use this laser and I use three millimeter birch plywood to um, enhance the design. So I'm gonna go over um, some of the design, especially for the dummy motor and the motor cell, some of the structural components I did just to make it a little bit more scale. I mean, it's foam board, but I can try. And uh, talk about how I designed uh, the parameters I used to cut the wood and talk about the final assembly. So uh, I hope you like it, thanks. Now you can find the plans online, but once I got, my, got a hold of them, I scanned them into my CAD system and converted them to a DXF file, which was then imported into Lightburn, which is my laser control system of choice. Once it's in there, I used uh, Dollar Tree Foam Board. Um, that's a retailer here in the U.S., and uh, the brand name is Adams, Adams Ready Board, um, in 5mm and white. So it's a polystyrene foam with two layers of paper above and below. Now, as we talked about in previous videos, I'm not able to cut all the way through this because of the reflectivity of the polystyrene white foam core. But what I can do is get a nice, uh, I can cut through the top layer and through a little bit of the foam. So once I trace this out and etch it into the top sheet of the foam board, I can then take an X-Acto knife or a work knife and then cut out all the parts as needed. So it's really, a much better way to do it than printing out the sheets, tacking them to there, and 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 then cutting through my paper. So I can I can trace out all the components, recut them, and it gives me a good line that I can cut through with my X-Acto knife. If you've ever given any thought to getting into RC planes, uh, building foam board models is a really a great way to go. Um, it's something that you can do at home in your basement. You do not need a lot of uh, big, expensive, and sometimes dangerous tools. It's a hot glue gun, some X-Acto knives. You don't have to use a laser as, as what I'm doing. You can do very much more simpler models than the one I'm building right now. But it's a great way to get um, your introduction into the hobby. Um, and it takes out a lot of the stress. Um, some of the models that you can buy that are commercial, made of foam, or made of balsa wood, they're very expensive, and it can be a very stressful thing if you're just learning to fly and you crash. With foam board models, if you crash, it's not a big deal. Just glue it back together, make yourself a couple other parts. So it really does take a lot of the anxiety out of the hobby, and it really does reduce costs. So I highly advise you to get into flying RC planes. It's a great way to be creative, get outdoors, have fun, spend time with friends and family. So if you can, um, search for flight test. It's a great way to uh, find plans, um, like-minded individuals, and it's a great way to get into the hobby. So here's hopefully the final design for the Stearman fake motor. I decided to go with three millimeter uh, birch plywood just to change it up a little bit instead of 3D printing the whole thing. Um, so I have the seven cylinders, uh, the motor will mount through here, and I incorporated into the battery tray with a little stop back here to stop from pulling out of the front. So hopefully this uh, works, and um, now I need to take each of these parts, export it as a DXF, and then bring it into light burn, and then put them into the stock so I can start cutting. All right, I've got all the parts loaded into light burn. These are all just the uh, single components, a lot of them I'm going to have to make multiples of. So when I'm going to align this into my material, I'll typically um, draw the material. So I'm going to give this a shape of 300 millimeters width and height. And that will represent my piece of three millimeter birch ply. So I have my safe positions down here, my fixture L1, L2, L3, and that represents the L1, L2, and L3, which is gonna be the corner, the origin of my stock. So right now I'm using my L3 position. So what I need to do is so that I can see my laser position, I'm going to bring the travel down to my L3 position. 
so that'll be represented on the light burn screen. So I'll just simply take my part here, my stock, and bring the corner down. And uh, that should represent where the material is uh, real world. So once I have that positioned, I can move my laser out of the way. I'll go back to top center. So now that I'm nicely located and square, I'll take this stock. It's assigned as my, um, what I call tooling one, which will not be cut, but it gives me a representation of my actual material. I can start bringing all my parts over and nesting them into my material. It was a tight squeeze, but I managed to get all of the parts nested into my material square there. Um, all the parts fit in really well. Um, there's just a bit of engraving on the top of the cylinder heads, which is up here at the top of the screen. But other than that, all of the other sections are just going to be uh, clearly cut all the way through. When you're designing parts with interlocking tabs, you really want to take uh, good care and measure your wood as precisely as you can. Mine was just a bit under three millimeters, so what that thickness will help you do is do some test cuts to make sure that your kerf offset will allow your design to interlock without too much slop and without them being too tight when you're when you're assembling your components because you want to have a good tight glue joint but you don't want to have too much slop in there so that your your assembly is a little bit loose so make sure you get a good measurement on your wood and um, for mine you want to make sure you set your kerf offset for me it was 0.075 millimeter and that'll ensure that your final assembly fits together really nicely without too much slop for the glue So this is the Stearman um, dummy engine, uh, seven cylinders uh, integrated with the motor cell. It's got a lip in here that uh, will lock it into the cell. I may put some Velcro down there. But when I put the battery in there into the battery spacer, it should lock it in pretty well so it's not going anywhere. It's a bit lighter than I thought actually. It's um, 67 grams. Uh, just to give you a sense of scale there. Forest 2200 battery I'm planning on running is uh, 230 grams, 229 grams. Um, 67 grams is comparable to about six, nine gram servos. So a little bit lighter than I thought. I actually tested it in there and um, the plane is still a little bit tail heavy. Put it in there and drop it in. I'll mount the motor, but I. I think it looks pretty good. So uh, let's finish this thing off. So here is the almost complete PT-17 Stearman uh, designed by Ben Harbor. Thanks for putting those plans out there, Ben. Appreciate it. And there is the pseudo seven cylinder motor. I think it came out okay. You can see the engraving. It nice and detailed there. This is a, a nine inch prop 
I am, I am running a uh, flight test power pack C motor uh, and ESC combo in here. I did use wood for the wing struts. Um, the original design called for foam board and bamboo skewers and they were a little bit wide. I think this looks just a little bit better in my opinion, but yeah, I'm happy with the way that came out. I have a 4S uh, 2200 pack in there, battery pack, and it's still a little bit tail heavy. So I may end up trying a 4S 4000 in there. If I'm gonna add mass, I might as well add uh, some longer flight time as well. Um, you can see the AR 410 Spectrum receiver in there in between the two 9 gram servos. Uh, oh, there's the ailerons there. And then here is the uh, rudder movement. So you can see the push rods. I put them through this little design here. This is a wooden mount. So in the front of the push rod mount, uh, guy, push rod support is a vertical slot. And on the back side are two horizontal slots. So when I screw those pieces together, the wires are trapped in there pretty well, but it's also easy uh, to assemble. So if I use the rudder, you can see pretty much no flex. And then the elevator as well. So it doesn't add a lot of mass and pretty happy with the way that that came out. So as you can see, there are quite a few things that you can use the NAJ Max 4 with the 80 laser module to do, even though your build is predominantly foam board. So I'm really happy with the way it came out. I'm really happy with the ease and use of the machine and how capable it is in making both internal and external components for these foam board builds. So thanks a lot uh, for coming along with me on this journey for this build, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks a lot, everyone.